These are two leaves of the Jerusalem artichoke plant. The leaf on the left is very sickly and the one on the right is very healthy. So, if we think that a virus is the cause of this disease, we're going to look for the viruses that are in it, or the fungi, or the bacteria, or maybe we saw insects on it. So then we want to go out there and kill the virus, kill the bacteria, kill the insects, and then we'll come up with fungicides and pesticides and insecticides, or a vaccine to prevent the bacteria or the viruses or the insects from killing this plant. So this is the thing. If we understand the health of a plant, then we understand the health of our bodies as nature has the same laws for everything. So let's take a closer look, a grander look at what's going on. So here we see the sickly Jerusalem artichoke plants. And they're still trying to grow as best as they can, but they're very sickly looking. So let's take a greater look at where they're coming from. And then we'll see that the growing conditions might not have been best for it. Perhaps they were too close to those trees, not getting enough sunshine or not getting enough rain or perhaps they were competing with all the underground roots of the trees that we can't see. Now let's take a look at where the healthy Jerusalem artichokes came from. And we'll see that the conditions were a little bit different here. It was ideal for Jerusalem artichokes. They're growing right in the middle of all these potatoes. Yet they must have had the right kind of soil conditions. The ideal kind of sun and shade and moisture. And they're growing very healthy. So if we understand this, we understand all of health. If we don't understand this, then we're going to look at that little disease thing, try to find the molecular thing that causes it, which is completely um, illogical way of looking at things, but that uh, accounts for 99.99% of the science in, that's going on these days with respect to the coronavirus. And then what we want to do is we want to come up with a vaccine to give this healthy plant, to prevent this healthy plant from sharing the disease to the sick plant. That's what we're trying to do. So if we understand that all we need to do is look at the health of the plant and the conditions, then we will understand everything that we need to know about health. So here are the Jerusalem artichokes a month after. We saw them originally with some really sickly looking little yellow dried out plants that were infested with bugs. And now, just over a month later, they're looking gray. They've all become very healthy. So all they needed was a little bit of nursing. That's what Florence Nightingale, the founder of Nurses, that's what she understood and that's what she promoted. She advised that there are no diseases out there. Let's just look at the conditions. So even though these plants didn't have the best of conditions, I gave them a little bit of extra care, a little bit of love and attention, and a little bit of water every day. And now they're growing and they're healthy. So that's what we want to do. We don't want to lose sight of that. Sometimes we get so boggled in science that science will close down the whole world and everybody will be left in a state of fear and confusion. Instead, let's just understand that it's the conditions that make the difference.
Dr. Hawkins started every lecture by saying nothing causes anything. That is all a bizarre illusion. So causality has a certain level of truth to it. So if I'm holding on to a glass of water and I drop it, the person looking and observing would say, Andrew dropped the glass and broke the glass. So there's a certain level of truth to that. However, we're missing the point that there's 10 million other factors that came into play before that happened. First, the glass had to be manufactured. So that was the evolution of uh, millions of years of human consciousness in order to just create the, the glass. And then the evolution of everything that led me to fill that glass with water in my own house. And then I have to take a look at everything in my life that led to that point where I was so unconscious that I dropped a glass of water and broke it. So the tendency is to just look at Andrew cause the glass to break. A equals B. The reality is there's 10,000 other influences, many of them happening at the same time that led to that. So let's take a look at that, um, a, a gardener's view of that, okay? So let's see this garden here. Now you see this garden with raised beds that I created this year. So if we look at causality, we'd say Andrew made the garden. A leads to B because earlier this year there was nothing here. There was just grass. So in reality, all I had was the intention to turn this into a garden. And then you'll see that there's uh, some beautiful lettuces and squash growing here and some radishes and a little statue of the Buddha. So what has happened is that if I say I created this, that's like I'm taking credit for the 10 million other influences that happened to lead to this. So um, this radicchio that's growing here um, has evolved over millions of years, as has this squash. And if we take a look at the stone there, just the creation of that stone involved the efforts of thousands of people over thousands of years. So you'll see that there's 10 million influences that led to the creation of this garden. So the tendency is to say that A causes B. So when it comes to illness, we say a virus causes a disease, A equals B, and we miss everything. We miss the whole point that there's 10,000 other influences. So the most anyone can say is that the virus is observed to be there perhaps it may or may not even be there okay so that's the most anyone can say and it may or may not have an influence so it's like looking at fish let's say you have a few sick fish a virologist is going to look at the fish that washed up on shore and want to know what is the virus that killed the fish Meanwhile, there's also water. So could we say that the water killed the fish because the water's there or the sand is there or there's 10 billion other pathogens in the water. So what killed the fish? Because we can see that it's all there. So somebody might look at it and say, well, perhaps um, the water has been polluted. Perhaps there's agricultural runoff and chemicals in the water. And, and that's what led to the fish being sick. So when we focus our efforts on just one thing, and, and what we tend to do in society is we, we get a, a specialization in virology. And then we say, oh, it must be a virus going around the world killing everybody. Let's talk to the expert, a virologist.
okay what we're doing is we're not seeing the context of everything else so we're better off talking to a generalist we're better off talking to a gardener so we saw the sick Jerusalem artichoke leaves and we saw how to heal them by nursing them right so let's take a look at the Jerusalem artichokes and we could see how healthy they are they were nursed so we took a look at the overall context so even when something gets sick it just gets nursed we don't want to fill these things with vaccines and we don't want to prevent the healthy plant the healthy plants are not making the weak plant sick so if we understand this lesson then there's no need to look at the rest of this section on the pandemic because we've been so conditioned and so brainwashed by everything we read and then the tendency is because we've invested so much in learning that we're not willing to see anything else so our minds made up the virus causes the disease that's it everybody needs to social distance everybody needs to wear a mask I mean if that's what we've done then perhaps the the four hours of video that follows will help us see that the virus theorists theories are full of holes so in reality in 2020 the death rate the overall mortality rate is has not changed much in the last 10 years it's actually lower this year than it was last year and so what we've done is we've reclassified deaths every year people die of things and those who have the most compromised immune systems are more susceptible so we just tend to reclassify them so a few years ago we classified a whole bunch of people uh, as dying of AIDS but we'll see that in the last 10 years the death rate the overall mortality rate of all causes on a global basis has not changed so all the numbers are here if you want to see them if we understand this lesson and we understand that it's at most an influence and there's a lot that we can do to take care of our health then we don't need to see the rest so we can go we can see what we've been doing seeing how ridiculous it is and we can take the mask off. We can breathe, knowing that nature knows how to take care of us. We know how to take care of ourselves. There's 10 million influences that lead to everything. So this is what I mean by A does not cause B.